Greetings. This is going to be a video about one of our favorite topics, which is how the central banks of the world do not understand the changes in the economy and the connection between quantitative easing and technological deflation. So I take you directly to an article here on CNBC. This was in the news all of last week. The Federal Reserve is going to start tapering bond purchases later this month as it begins pulling back on pandemic aid. So they're going to unwind their money printing and then they think they're going to be able to raise the Fed funds rate and they still have the belief that a certain fed funds rate as high as three percent is normal quote unquote normal they use the word normalization of interest rates and that is so outdated that it is truly frightening that they actually cannot learn from their mistakes no matter how many times they have tried to taper bond purchases in the past they tried to do that in 2010, 2011, 2014, and 2018. And every single time there was a major stock market correction and they ended up printing more money than ever before. Now, the first principles of technology and economics, which you're familiar with if you've been watching this channel, predict all of this very, very well. And this is a wonderful thing that the amount of quantitative easing that can be done without inflation rises exponentially. But these macroeconomists, they have no understanding of technology, no understanding of the accelerating rate of change and how those two subjects affect economics. And therefore they can only think within the 1970s era frameworks that they have memorized. So let me show you how far off their expectations are versus the actual data of what has been happening and why they are so unable to even grasp it, despite the fact that at least I've been explaining this for a long time and quite a few other people have understood the technological deflation dimension as well. So we go to something called the dot plot. This is an official Federal Reserve document, and this is the most recent one from September 22nd, 2021. The current Fed funds rate is zero, and they believe that this is the rate at which it will rise. And they actually think that longer run, it will stabilize at 2.5%, the Fed funds rate. They used to think it would be 3%, at least being wrong so many times has gotten them down from 3% to 2.5%. And the little dots are the various Federal Reserve governors. There are 12 of them. So even the lowest one, is just one person at 2%, most cluster around 2.5%, and a couple still think 3%. But the fact that they drifted down from 3% to 2.5% is progress, I suppose, but they don't realize the Fed funds rate will be zero forever and quantitative easing will also be forever and rising exponentially. So keep this thought in mind that they think the Fed funds rate will be 2.5% as an equilibrium in the future. And now we go to something called the Wuja shadow rate, which I've discussed in other videos here. This is a very obscure economic metric that most people don't even know about and is not discussed in the financial media, but this is the composite of US quantitative easing and the Fed funds rate to give you an effective Fed funds rate because the purpose of quantitative easing is to simulate a negative interest rate. So quantitative easing began around 2010, where this black line is, and it simulated a negative interest rate. And every time they try to go positive, they are forced to go negative again. This is not only because of COVID. We would be at exactly the same place if coronavirus had not occurred. It just would not have been as drastic. It would have been more gradual. And now that they're tightening a little bit again because they are going to taper bond purchases, but they already have plateaued them a little bit. This Wuja shadow rate is about minus 1.7%, as you can see here, minus 1.7% in October 2021. The data was last updated very recently, November 3rd, 2021, which is just a few days ago. So this is at minus 1.7. The Federal Reserve thinks this is going to be plus 2.5% when it's minus 1.7. So they believe they're going to unwind their entire balance sheet, even though for 11 plus years, they've not been able to do that. Every single time they have failed to keep up with the downward trend, there's been a major market correction and they've had to print more than ever before. Remember the entire trend is downward. Just see where my cursor is. The trend is downward, which is what you would expect from accelerating technological deflation. Even minus 2% is not enough. That means they're not doing enough quantitative easing or are at least dependent on the quantitative easing of other countries to make it appear like the United States is not printing money when it's drawing from the printed money of other countries. So they think they're gonna go from minus 1.7% to plus 2.5%. I guarantee you they're never gonna get to plus 2.5%. And two years from now, they'll be printing more than they ever were before, despite all this talk of tapering. Because remember, this is the fifth or sixth time they've tried to taper their quantitative easing. 
they are going to be doing more than before in the relatively near future. Plus, the type of quantitative easing is also saturating. Bond buying has been super distorted. That's why $17 trillion of bonds worldwide have negative yield, as per my video over here that you can watch. The fact that so many bonds have negative yield indicates that bond buying is not even the way to introduce liquidity into the market anymore. They have to send cash directly to people and that has to be an irreversible process, be declared as such, and the amount sent to people has to be gradually rising. All market forces are pointing towards that. I predicted all of this in my 2016 publication, The Atom Book, which is also on this channel, and all of the patterns predicted back then when we had a lot less data are coming true. And we will soon be in a situation of more money printing than ever before, and the Fed funds rate is still never gonna be close to 2.5% ever for any significant period of time, if at all, just based on the very indisputable downward trend of this Wuja shadow rate. Now, those of you who watch this channel know that I insist that we always take only a worldwide number of quantitative easing because quantitative easing is borderless because technological deflation is borderless. The Wuja shadow rate is still only a US metric and takes only US quantitative easing and Fed funds rate into account, but it's still the best we've got and far more enlightened than the Federal Reserve itself, which thinks it can go from here, minus 1.7%, all the way up to here, plus 2.5% and assuming that will just be normal when in fact there'll be a major market correction long before they get to that point and they'll be forced to print more, I hasten to repeat again. So we go to this Yardini report, which I speak about almost every month. And these are the four major central banks of the world. The United States Federal Reserve is red. It's not even the largest contributor to world money printing. The European Central Bank is the largest contributor. But the only number that matters is if you add all four of these together to get the grand total. And this is the grand total. And notice how it's rising exponentially in a smooth parabolic curve. That's why the fact that the US Federal Reserve thinks it can reverse quantitative easing is absurd because they're acting like the United States is the only country in the world. This number is rising exponentially, and I guarantee that by the end of this decade, by 2030, we will have a number closer to 100 trillion. Right now, it's $30.8 trillion of cumulative money printing by these four major central banks of the world. It will be closer to 100 trillion by 2030. And the only way it will be less than 100 trillion is if they do something even more drastic, which is send cash directly to people, in which case they need to print a lot less because the velocity of money of sending cash directly to people is much more. But if they continue with anything close to bond buying, this will be 100 trillion or so by 2030. So the fact that they think they can reverse it and that returning to normal is something they think of as being no money printing, a reversal of all prior money printing, and a Fed funds rate of 2.5% is simply so out of touch that it's shameful. And people in the future are going to be shocked at how clueless the economists of our time were. And hopefully the videos that I'm producing will be seen as someone who figured out the future of economics far earlier than the official establishment did. That's why I'm doing these videos. So to see more detail about this, you can view the video I did about the most recent update in this card over here. I don't need to go through all of that again. Just remember that the United States only does about one fourth as much quantitative easing relative to the size of its economy as Japan does. And it only does one half as much relative to the size of its economy as the Eurozone does. So the United States is not even a major printer of money in the world, contrary to what the media would have you believe. And no, money printing does not cause inflation as I continue to do a monthly update of every single month. But anyway, this shows that the Federal Reserve is going to make the same mistake again. And as we know, the definition of insanity is to do the same thing multiple times and expect a different result. Yet that is what the Federal Reserve is doing because these PhD economists are so theoretical that they just cannot grasp why what they memorized from their 1970s era textbooks is not being borne out in the way the textbook describes, even though this is blindingly obvious to anyone who understands technology, who understands the accelerating rate of change, and who understands the connection between liquidity and technological disruption. And if you're watching this channel, you in fact do understand all three of those things by now. And if you like this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and thank you very much for watching.